Welcome back to my kitchen. So, about five minutes ago, I remembered that it is my mother-in-law's birthday tomorrow, and every year I bake her a strawberry rhubarb pie. Um, I have learned from years past that late August is not the best time of year to find rhubarb. So, um, I did already have on hand just some pie filling, but I'm going to jazz it up a bit because I would hate to just be seen just using pie filling. Um, luckily, I always make a six times batch. Anytime I make pie dough, I make six times the batch that I need. Um, and then I freeze them in blocks of two, two, two crusts each um, for such times as these. Because you never know when you're going to need a pie at the last minute. Um, please comment down below if you have that problem. So. I'm going to do something a little different. Last year I added more strawberries to the mix. I'm going to be doing that again. I've got frozen strawberries here. Thank goodness I had them in my fridge. So I'm going to be adding these which will add a nice freshness to this canned stuff. Uh, but I got to get it reduced down a little bit or you're going to have like a weird mixture of textures. I do need these to be fairly well cooked for them to not like just taste like an odd like like I added something to another thing. I want to make sure that they marry well. So I'm going to start the frozen fruit in a second here. But the other thing I'm going to be doing is, I've mentioned before that my mother-in-law always comes up with like interesting gifts to bring every time she visits my home. So I am going to, this, this one she gifted me in the spring. Um, it's a Trader Joe's hibiscus flowers candied or dried and sweetened, which is basically candied. Um, and I think she just thought I'm a culinary genius, surely I'll come up with something to do with it. And to some extent, I probably could have come up with something else, but uh, I ended up tossing them in the freezer because I just was like, uh, like I tried to, I just tasted them like raw and they were a lot like a dried sweetened flour. I almost think that they would have been more appetizing to me if they had not been sweetened. But anyway, so I froze them. And I was thinking, like a month ago, how I, I I came across them in the freezer, and I realized that really, uh, this is what they look like frozen, by the way. Pretty wacky. I think this is actually two and one, or oh no, it's just the petals have kind of curled in on themselves. Let's see. But anyway, um, I remember coming across them in the freezer, and I thought to myself, I still have not thought about what I could possibly do with these, but I actually bet they would be really good in a strawberry rhubarb pie because they've got the texture that is not that far off from cooked rhubarb. Um, and it's the texture that's frankly a little off-putting to really be thinking of what else I could do with it. I could do something with fresh hibiscus, but I almost feel like Trader Joe's, it says a sweet and tart treat. I think they just expect people to eat it like dried fruit. Um, you could probably chop them up and put them in a cookie, maybe with like white chocolate chips, sort of like as a substitution for cranberries or something like that. Um, like there are things you could do, but I had not thought of anything yet. And I came across it and I was like, I should just put this in her pie. She's the one that thought they were cool enough to buy in the first place. She's the one that gifted them to me. I'm not going to tell her necessarily that this is the same bag that she gifted me. But, uh, I mean, if she asks, I'm not going to like lie, but I thought, why not incorporate the hibiscus flowers into her pie, see if she even notices, and if she does comment on it being different from other years, I will tell her that I, I got the idea from her gift. So that's my plan. So I'm about to chop these up, but I thought, as I was getting them out, I was like, I should just go ahead and use this as fodder for filming as long as I'm here. So I'll kind of catch you up on my life while I make this, because it's a very simple recipe, obviously. Um, just frozen berries, frozen dried hibiscus, and frozen can or in a canned fruit. So um, I will go ahead and point you down to my counter. I have not had time to like clean it, so apologies in advance. But um, you're here for me, right? <laughs> just kidding. All right. So I'm just gonna chop these up pretty fine. I don't want there to be just like a an overwhelming flour texture going on. I think that the flavor will pair very nicely with strawberries and rhubarb, particularly because rhubarb is so hard to find and I can't supplement with fresh rhubarb right now, especially since I kind of forgot. 
um, this will add more of that texture, that very highly fibrous texture, um, and it will also add more of that sourness that the rhubarb contributes to the pie. For those of you who have never tried a rhubarb dessert um, and might not even know what exactly it is, rhubarb resembles celery a great deal. I think it's a cousin of celery. but I'm, I'm not 100% on that right now. Um, it's, it's very, very tart. You, because of its texture like celery, but also its tartness, it's not really suitable for savory dishes, and it's also kind of a weird choice for sweet dishes unless you can really cook it down, which not only cuts that sourness, but also brings in a softness, so it's more like cooked celery. Um, but it's really best paired with either a whole lot of sugar on its own, or strawberries and a little bit of sugar, or some other kind of fruit, but strawberries are the most popular. I think that has a lot to do with color. The flavor is also excellent, but I don't really see how any other berry wouldn't be similar in terms of complementing the rhubarb. So my theory is, that it's just the colors um, get along so well. So I'm almost curious if these hibiscus flowers, which are typically pretty sour on their own, although these are already sweetened, um, might be such a dupe for the rhubarb that they'll really, I really think that they're gonna go great in the pie. I'm very confident about that. But I am curious if they will even be detectable once they've been cooked down and softened a bit. So, um, so just kind of done like a, a rough chop. Um, they are sticky, so it's a bit like chopping up raisins or something. I'll turn on my strawberries. Move my rhubarb a little out of the way. I'm gonna let my strawberries cook um, and get nice and soggy, and then I'll add the rhubarb and a little bit of water. I mean, not the rhubarb. Um, I'll add the hibiscus and a little bit of water so that they can kind of rehydrate, and then I will add the can towards the end with uh, some fresh lemon juice to really wake it up and cut that canned flavor because one of the biggest sins of canned uh, fruit pie filling is that it is way too sugary and a lot of times too thick and too much syrup not enough fruit so um this is just a really great how to to beef up a canned recipe if you either don't want to make a whole recipe or you're using a canned fruit that's not that available seasonally like i am so maybe you love strawberry pies but strawberries are just not very like they're they're not they're maybe too expensive or something like that. You can just get some frozen berries and canned pie filling if you're not much of a cook and combine them with a little bit of lemon juice and sort of wake it up. Um, you shouldn't need to add sugar because, again, I'm also going to go ahead and add some proprietary spice blend that I, like you can add whatever spices you usually put into a fruit pie. I'm going to put whatever spices I usually put into a fruit pie. I'm not going to tell you what they are but that will also make it taste more homemade. Um, there's really no shame in using canned ingredients, especially in a pinch, but it certainly does make it less obvious if you have the opportunity to fix them a little bit. <sighs> Today was, while these are cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and just point you back at me. Ah. Hello. Um, Today was probably the, kind of the first cooler day of the summer. Um, it was like in the 80s today, and it was bliss. I felt like, it's so weird how like suddenly having temperatures in the 80s after being over 100, like 50 out of the last 56 days or whatever, um, it's almost like you can see better. Like it's hard to explain, but it's like you could see better. Um, like, I just feel like a different person. I felt so energized this morning, and I got, and then I went outside and it was raining, 
and it was amazing, and I was, like, driving with the window open a little bit, and, um, it was just, just awesome, and it's supposed, to, it's probably going to be warmer again tomorrow, not that warm, though, like, it'll still feel great, it'll be in the 90s instead of 100s, um, but it's supposed to be cooler and rainy for the majority of the next week, so that is just so exciting to me. Now, these strawberries are, uh, thawing about as fast as they're losing juice, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little water now. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm at, I, I added a cup of water, like a literal cup, like eight, eight ounces of water. And I'm just gonna wait until my strawberries are more whoo, thawed out. <laughs> I just popped one. Um, are more thawed out and um, have kind of simmered for a few minutes. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add my dried hibiscus. Um, but yeah, it was just such a gorgeous day today for a Texan. Um, anything that resembles European weather is just the best. My parents are in Ireland right now, and the photos they keep posting are just so enviable. It's, hmm. Um, so my plan with these, this pie is I'm going to go ahead and assemble the filling while I'm thawing the dough, work on editing a video, come out and roll out the dough, pop it in the oven, do my workout, pull it back out of the oven, let it cool, and then tomorrow I'll be serving it. Because um, the nice thing is pie is originally intended to be served at room temperature. So you don't have to bake it and pull it fresh out of the oven and keep it warm. Um, now, it doesn't hurt to have warm or hot apple pie a la mode, but like it's also fine to just microwave your piece or pop it back in the oven right before serving. But officially, like the point of pie was always to be a sort of a mechanism to transport the filling. Um, like meat pies are a lunch, so it's kind of like a lunchable in the olden days. You're supposed to just be able to like make it and then take it with you and then eat it at room temperature. And um, same with cake. Cake is intended to be served at room temperature. Um, if you refrigerate pie, you should take it out an hour, I mean, sorry, if you refrigerate cake, you should take it out of the fridge an hour or two before you serve it, depending on how hot it is outside, um, because the ice, the icing is not supposed to be cold, and the cake isn't either. <laughs> um, some people prefer it that way, and there's, you know, there's no, no problem with that, um, but it is part of why I'm not that big of a fan of ice cream cake, because um, for me it just makes the icing, well, it depends on where you get the ice cream cake. If it's made with some kind of a buttercream icing layer at some point, it just ends up being really cold and the cake ends up being really cold and a little soggy and, and it's not really my thing. But a lot of people love it. My husband, it's one of his favorite things. So I'm not going to knock it, but I'm probably not going to eat it either. Um, and that's kind of the hard part with this particular pie. It's not a pie I would normally eat. I'm not a fan of rhubarb myself personally. Um... And I also am fructose free and this will not be a fructose free pie. So I will not be partaking, I never do. Um, and that doesn't really make a difference. When you are a baker, a lot of what you bake, you don't get to taste test first. It's different from like savory cooking because when you're a savory chef, you can be tasting all the time, um, like throughout and see, oh, that's too salty. Oh, that's too whatever. But with baking, you just have to understand your chemistry well enough that you could bake the entire unit not take a sample and sell it and know that it's going to work. Um, and so any experimentation is done like separately as its own entire separate pastry. You don't tend to experiment on something you're going to be giving away or selling unless the experimentation is something that is very familiar chemically to, to what you've always done. Um, so for example, I made an amaretto ice cream several days ago. And I, I don't think I've ever actually made an amaretto ice cream, especially not one with a milk alternative. But I understand chemically how the alcohol reacts with everything else. Um, and I also understand chemically how milk substitutes tend to handle um, a recipe. And so I was able to confidently make that ice cream. Um, and in that case, I was able to take tastes um, throughout the process because it's ice cream. It's not like a cake. But um, I think a lot of people are surprised to realize how little, um, like, a baker actually samples the merchandise unless they just enjoy it. Um, because you can't be taking slices off a cake to see if it's right. 
You just have to really know your recipe and be confident. And, if, and the cool thing is, when you understand the chemistry of baking, um, you'll know by looking at it or by its texture that something has gone wrong. If you forget an ingredient, it will look a certain way or smell a certain way. And then you might take a little piece and taste it and make sure that you like didn't swap out salt for something else or forget the baking soda. But when you really know your chemistry, you'll be able to look at it and know what you did wrong immediately because um, you've just done it a lot and you've seen everything. <laughs> so after about, you know, 14, 15 years of baking, you know, if you're making mistakes, you're able to identify them quickly without having to taste anything. I still will taste it if I think there's something wrong, but I don't have to, especially if it looks right. So little chef secret, which may be scandalous, or maybe I'm overthinking it. I think a lot of people assume that a chef will taste every single thing they put out, but you do something enough times, you're not about to eat every single one of them. Uh, that's how you don't get fat as a cake decorator. I've I, I've gained a lot more weight since I've been out of the full-time baking world than I ever had when I was in it. Because I was physically very active. I was fulfilled. I was busy, busy, busy. And I was surrounded by sugar all the time. I didn't need to eat it. I could smell it all day. And it wasn't bad. It never got, like, gross. Like, you know, I know the people who work at delis and stuff like that, they're like, oh, my gosh, it just everything smells like bologna. But, um, like, there's never a problem. The smell of buttercream doesn't really get old, for me anyway. But I don't particularly need to eat it <laughs> either. All right. Looks like my strawberries have gotten thawed out. So I'm going to go ahead and add my hibiscus flowers. Part of my willingness to experiment a little bit on my mother-in-law and sister-in-law is that they are also very adventurous eaters and not terribly picky. Um, my sister kind of notoriously non-picky. I mean, my sister-in-law. Uh, my mother-in-law, though, often eats my sister-in-law's experiments, so they will be game. And again, I'm quite confident that this particular addition is not going to be like problematic but I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze my lemon now as the hibiscus rehydrates I may have to add a little bit more water but I'm kind of wanting it to get that nice gelatinous um, pie filling texture so I, I don't want it to be too juicy but I also want there to be enough juiciness to carry this and like completely sort of break down the gelatinousness of this and then kind of bring it back to its own cohesive thing so that they're fully combined and melded here I am gesturing off camera basically I don't know about you but I'm a very kinesthetic person and I can't even say the words right if I'm not gesturing wildly with my hands demonstrating whatever it is I'm trying to say so I'll do it on the phone or off camera while narrating so I just did one whole lemon I'm just very confident that this is gonna be wicked sweet um, it does not contain high fructose corn syrup, but the first ingredient is sugar. That is scary because you tend to list ingredients by how, like the, the whatever there is the most of in the recipe is what you will list first. And whatever there is the least of in the recipe, you will list last and everything in between is sort of accordingly. And so for a pie recipe that, is supposed to be a fruit pie recipe to have more sugar than even water or fruit is <laughs> kind of mind blowing. So I'm gonna go rinse off the top of my can real quick and get it opened while this kind of does its thing. 
I do want to keep stirring it so it doesn't burn. There you go. See how gelatinous it is? That's all sugar. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Just going to bring it down to a simmer. Give those flowers time to rehydrate. When I make a pie filling from scratch, I add as little sugar as I can. And I really try to let the fruit carry the sweetness. Now with a rhubarb, you're going to have a more sour pie filling. But people who prefer a strawberry rhubarb pie are going to be used to that sourness. I don't necessarily think that it needs to be compensated for. Um, but I feel like these canned fillings are trying to make basically just a strawberry pie filling with the word fruit rhubarb on it. So hopefully I can water down that extra sugar a little bit so that the rhubarb actually shines. Um, and also so that it's closer to a homemade pie recipe for me. Because that's more my, my vibe. So let's see here. These flowers are looking still pretty textured. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it to simmer a little longer. Okay, I just took a taste of the hibiscus flower. It's actually really delicious in this form. Mixed with the strawberry and the lemon juice and a little bit of water and um, soggied out. Much better than the, the, the dried flowers were, in my opinion, just as a candy. Um, I'm not saying that they're not good as a candy. I just think it's a very specific person would like it, and that person is not me. Um, but it's a great ingredient. I might actually do this again someday. Um, I might experiment with adding these flowers to other recipes because they're beautiful. And I could really theoretically add whole petals or the whole flower. I could play with drying them myself, um, candying them myself, trying them without candying them, fresh. I have a hibiscus plant in my own garden. So I'm a little bit inspired by this now and I'm suddenly very pleased that she gifted it to me. So maybe there's some genius behind her randomness. Um, and I'm actually getting very excited for it. So I am going to see here. I'm going to go ahead and add my canned fruit and see how thick it is. And then I might add a little bit of water to it and continue cooking it just a little longer so that they can really marry. So I'll go ahead and it's funny cause it looks so much like cherry pie filling when it's in the can. I believe, I suspect anyway, that this is in part my mother-in-law's favorite dessert because it is the one she requests every year for her birthday because she is from the northern Midwest and I think rhubarb pie is more of a north Midwestern thing so she doesn't really find it here much because we're in Texas um, so I think it's kind of a taste of home for her because most other desserts she has more access to. But I think this is probably the only time a year, really, that she gets to have rhubarb pie. So that's part of why I continue making it every year for her. Instead of, like, even when I'm tired and busy, I don't phone it in and buy a cake or something. Because I know that it's kind of a taste of home for her. And I don't know for sure, but maybe her mom used to make it for her. So... All right, this is actually a really great texture, so I'm going to leave it to simmer a little bit longer. And unless it gets just weird thick, um, I'll probably just leave it there. Because now I really can't tell which pieces are from my frozen strawberries and what is just part of the canned. So that is how you um, resuscitate a canned pie filling. I will come back when I am ready to roll out my dough and then I'll show you the finished product. So Jim's going to taste test the filling for me real quick. Ooh. Oh, see, like, I don't know. Rhubarb always looks cool, but I always forget like what it is. 
It's isn't it kind of like celery? It yeah, it's kind of. I think it's in the celery family. Uh, I'll have to double check that. I'm thrilled about that. Okay, I'll try. Just blow on it. Don't think about it. Like honestly, the amount of uh, rhubarb in this entire pie. Yeah, is probably, it looks like, like probably not that bad. It's mostly a strawberry pie. Do you think it's cool enough yet? I don't know. Touch, touch, touch your lip. Touch your lip. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, like it's good. It's good. I think. I think you're right. I think rhubarb for me is just kind of like not bad. It's just kind of like unremarkable. It's just like oh. Yeah, mostly just tastes like a strawberry pie, but it's a really yeah. good strawberry it pie. It's good though. The flavor tastes really natural. Did you do fructose free on this too? No. It would have fooled me because it tastes like natural sugar. You know what I mean? Because I added uh, fresh strawberries, well, fresh frozen, and lemon juice, and the hibiscus flowers, Sweet. which are all sour, like more tart. Oh, you added those hibiscus flowers to it? All of them. That's weird because I tried that. I didn't like it. I know, but it's not bad in this, huh? Most of the texture you got was probably hibiscus flower because they're more of like a filler. They're, mm. they're chopped up pretty small. There's something that's a little sour, but like makes it taste natural, like a natural sugar. Mm -hmm. That's probably either the rhubarb or, or the hibiscus or both, or the lemon juice. Basically, if you think something's going to be overly cloningly sweet, add some acid. is still a little frozen which is why it's cracking but as it thaws from just me working it out it should stick back together um, if your dough starts looking like that when it's not frozen that's a problem but this is perfectly fine it'll just roll out Very, very cold in the middle. Pick up the whole piece very, very gently. Flip it over. Knock a little of that excess flour off. space this way so I'm going to go ahead and go back and forth. This is the other thing that's a little bit of a secret of mine. If your pie dough is good enough, it almost doesn't matter what you put in it. Canned, not canned. The star is the, is the pastry. As long as what you're making isn't literal sewage, Pido will make everything better. It's like it's like chocolate or I don't know, nutmeg or some non-food related duct tape or something. Except duct tape just sort of fixes anything. Whereas a perfect pie dough, a perfect pastry crust, it will make anything better. It doesn't just fix things, it just elevates everything it touches. Just 
for measurement. You want to remember how tall your dish is. So you give yourself a good lip. Okay. I think what I will do is allow myself enough crust for a lattice and a beautiful shell. over. Fold it one more time. Gently lift it up. Like so. Drape. Tuck. Drape. And tuck. Beautiful. Speaking quieter, obviously, because it's late and my babies are asleep. And I really don't want to wake them up. Let me go ahead and add my filling before I cut it. Just right in the middle there. By now, all of the hibiscus has had plenty of time to totally absorb all the good liquid and flavor because it's completely cooled down to room temperature. strips. So we're just going to go ahead and clean this up. You really have to do it with the tip of your knife when you don't have a pizza cutter or a pastry wheel depending on whether you eat pizza. They're the same thing though. Do the lattice when you maybe don't have quite enough for a top piece, um, or you just want the beautiful innards to peek out. So I'm going to go ahead and trim these edges here. And you want to trim fully over the lip, but not too much beyond it, because you will be tucking your lattices in underneath where you trim, like your edge, like so. You gotta work fast if you're as close to the oven as I am, because the butter in your dough will start to melt, and the integrity of your presentation will suffer. This beautiful strawberry rhubarb hibiscus pie. Not the most beautiful pie I've ever made, but it's quite late. 
but I'm tired. So I'm going to cut these just a hair longer than I've cut the edge of my pie, like so. to get my knife sharpened soon. I'm probably going to cut myself just because I'm not used to how sharp they are. <laughs> okay. Set aside those scraps. Okay, now you tuck your lattice pieces underneath your dough like this. Yeah, I'll do it over here. Okay, just tuck it under like so. You can par-bake your crust um, if you want to with a fruit pie, however, not if you're going to do a top crust or a lettuce. So you can par-bake if you're going to do, for example, a crumble topping or like a pumpkin pie where the topping will be like whipped cream or something like that. So I've got them all tucked in and now what you're going to do is you're going to go with two fingers and one, and you're going to go quack, 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 it's like a duck, quack, 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 so you'll see what I mean, quack. There are many ways to edge your pie, but this is a really reliable, kind of classic way to flute your edges. It's usually a little bit prettier when you're not doing a lattice. but it'll seal it, which is the important part. Because you're pinching together the dough, thereby connecting the lattice to the crust on the bottom. There are three kinds of egg wash. There's whole egg, there's yolk only, and there's whites only. For a pie, I prefer to do whole egg. Um, it is called an egg wash and not just scrambled egg because you do cut it with water and sometimes even a tiny splash of vinegar. You mix it up really well. Because you don't want to have a coating of egg on your pie. You want to have just a little bit of a glaze and something to stick your turbinado sugar to. and I don't like this pooling here, so I'm going to have to pick it up. I don't love these silicone brushes, but they're all I have right now. You don't get that pooling with a normal basting brush, so you just kind of have to try to absorb it and move it. Okay, so I've got my egg wash. Now I'm going to get my terminado sugar. I'm just going to Pour it into my hand. You're just going to sprinkle liberally. What this will do is it'll add a nice sparkle once it's baked. Not to mention a little bit of a crunch just on the top bit. And it'll add kind of layers to the filling because there will be this sort of glazed layer of sweetness on the very top. And then the filling itself is a little more tart and fruity rather than just pure sugar. So you get almost like a little top layer from the sugar. Ta-da! Here's the finished product. I wanted to show you a little trick. You know that you did your pie right when you can spin it 
inside the pie pan like that because that means that your whole crust completely remained whole and didn't leak and you can actually take it out of the pie pan which I will very likely do so that I can bring it to her and not have to ask for my pan back but a perfect pie should be able to stand up on its own if the crust is done right.